This is the example on slide nine of our chapter 20, part one PowerPoint. And in this example, I'm going to show you how to balance a redox reaction. Um, it's a slightly different method than we learned first semester for balancing normal equations. Um, so I'm gonna lead you through a relatively simple example first, and then a more complex one, and then another final type. Um, basically, balancing these types of reactions is separated into acidic or basic solutions. So typical redox reactions are balanced with regards to them being in acidic solutions. Um, but sometimes reactions occur in basic solutions and there's one extra step we have to account for when we're balancing those types of reactions. So the redox reaction they want us to balance in this problem is aluminum solid plus um, copper 2 plus gives you aluminum 3 plus plus copper solid. So the first step in balancing a redox reaction is to figure out what's oxidized and what's reduced. And you might be looking at this equation and thinking, well, there's one of each, there's one aluminum on each side and there's one copper on each side. But for redox reactions, not only do we have to make sure that um, the compounds are balanced, we also have to make sure that we're balanced in terms of charge, aka electrons. So if you look at the first side, we have a total of a plus two charge on the reactant side, and on the product side, we have a plus three charge. So this is not balanced as it currently is written. So that's what we're gonna go through in this process together. So our first step is to figure out the oxidation stage, which can then help us determine what's oxidized and what's reduced. So um, remember that anything that's in its um, normal state um, that it's found at room temperature is gonna have an oxidation state of zero. So here we have aluminum solid, um, doesn't have a charge next to it, so therefore its oxidation state is zero. Copper two plus, that's an easy one, it's already written for us. Um, if it's not paired with anything else, the oxidation state is the charge of the ion, so it's plus two. For aluminum plus three, or three plus, the oxidation state is plus three. And for copper, it's solid, it's not paired with anything else, that's the state we find it at room temperature, so it's also got an oxidation state of zero. So now we can go through, step two is to figure out um, what's oxidized, what's reduced. Actually this is, um, if you're following on your PowerPoint on slide nine, this is actually just additional part of step one. Um, so aluminum is going from zero to plus three. Remember any time something is getting more positive, apologize for my dog barking, um, like I was saying any time you get more positive in your oxidation state that means you're undergoing oxidation. Remember oxidation is loss of electrons, loss of negative charge. So we can write zero going to plus three, that is an oxidation. And on the other hand, copper is going from plus two to zero, it's getting more negative. If you get more negative, you're gaining electrons, therefore you're being reduced. Reduced was referring to reduction in charge. More negative, reduction, more electrons. So copper is going from plus two to zero, therefore it is being reduced. So our next step in balancing is to basically separate these two um, half reactions, we call them half reaction of oxidation, half reaction of reduction. We separate them into two individual equations for the purpose of balancing. So my oxidation half reaction is going to be aluminum 
And I'm going to stop writing the phases um, until the very end of the problem, just because it's less for me to write. Um, but they are still there, so and they are still important. So aluminum goes from aluminum 0 to aluminum 3 plus. So that's our oxidation half reaction. And our reduction half reaction is copper 2 plus going to copper 0. So that's your second step in this problem. Um, if you go to the next slide on your PowerPoint, the third step is to balance each with respect to hydrogen and oxygen. So to balance our oxygens, we add water to either side. And to balance our hydrogens, we add H plus ions. So in this problem, for step three, we don't have any oxygens or hydrogen um, atoms to balance. So we're basically skipping step three for this problem. I'll do a problem um, for our next example where we have to incorporate this step and you'll see what I mean when I talk about adding H2O or H plus to balance O and H. So then step four is to add our electrons. Um, redox reaction is transfer of electrons between um, something that's reduced and something that's oxidized. So we have to incorporate these into our half reactions. They're not going to be present in our overall reaction um, at the end when we finished balancing, but for our um, half reactions, we need to have them. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide and rewrite. So our, actually, I'm going to go back. Um, our oxidation, if we look here, so this is step three, I'll separate that. Um, aluminum is going from zero to plus three. So that means it's losing three electrons. So the way we write that in a oxidation half reaction is we include the electrons as a product. Anytime you have something that's oxidized, the electrons are written as a product. So aluminum's going from zero to aluminum three plus, and we're gonna add those three electrons that make it happen. So notice now the charge on each side of this is balanced. If you have a three plus charge and a three minus charge, that gives you overall zero, and aluminum on the reactant side is also zero. For a reduction, like the half reaction of copper two to copper zero, electrons are written as a reactant. So this is a very, very important concept for redox reaction balancing. Oxidation, electrons are written as a product. Um, for reduction, electrons are written as a reactant. So in this, it's going to be Cu2 plus, and we've gone from 2 to 0, so we are gaining 2 electrons. I apologize for the background noise. Um, my dog is very active right now. So, um, Copper two plus plus two electrons give you gives you copper zero. So <clears throat> that is step three. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide um, and rewrite these two half reactions. Um, so our oxidation is aluminum gives you aluminum three plus plus three electrons. And our reduction is copper two plus plus two electrons giving you copper zero. So now step four is to balance, um, sorry, that was step, oh, I've confused myself. Okay, so the thing we just did was step four, in including the electrons. Step five, if you're following along on your PowerPoint, is to make sure that the electrons are balanced. So notice for our oxidation, we have three electrons, and for our reduction, we have two. We need those two values to be equal to one another. 
So what I'm going to have to do is multiply both half reactions by some small whole number so that my numbers of electrons in each reaction are equal. So between 3 and 2, I think it's called the least common multiple, um, the, the least common multiple between the two would be 6. So for the first reaction, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2. That's going to give me 6 electrons. And for my reduction half reaction, I'm going to multiply that whole thing by 3. And so step, um, step 5 is basically we're going to rewrite the two of these. So my oxidation would be 2 aluminum. 2 aluminum 3 plus plus 6 electrons and then my reduction would be 3 copper 2 plus plus 6 electrons gives me 3 copper so then step 6 if you're following along on your powerpoint um, is to basically add these two half reactions together now, anything that's on the same side of the arrow adds together. Anything that's on opposite sides, if it's the same, cancels out. So notice I have in my oxidation six electrons as a product, and in my reduction I have six electrons as a reactant. These are going to cancel. Now nothing else cancels. So even though I have copper on both sides, these are not the same species. Copper 2 plus and copper 0 are not the same, so therefore they do not cancel out. So my addition of the two of these would be 2 aluminum plus 3 copper 2 plus gives you 2 aluminum 3 plus plus 3 Cu. Um, and I forgot to write the phases in this, so that is not aqueous. Solid, that's aqueous, that's aqueous, and that's solid. So in your final reaction, you need to write the phases. Um, but you're, when you're balancing, I wouldn't worry about it because it's just another thing that you have to write. So then we can double check ourselves. Step seven, if you're following along, is to verify the reaction is balanced. And so... If we look here, the charges on both sides and the elements on both sides should be balanced. So we have two aluminum reactants, two aluminum on the product side, three copper two plus here, three copper two plus on the other side, and then charge wise, three times two plus is six plus on the reactant side, and two times three plus is six plus on the product side. So we are balanced. We are happy, and this is your final answer with, if you're following along, phases should be written next to it, but I ran out of room. And there you have it.